Matt Tuck, and I'm going to be doing my presentation on bucket truck safety. So let's get into it. First, we have our introduction. This, can be, this slide describes what we will present in the presentation and the main seven talk, topics in the basic outline. We got how a bucket truck works, safety rules, inspections, hazards, and rescue, and then escape from disabled equipment. And then how a bucket truck works. There's many different bucket, bucket truck types out there that are uh, called aerial lifts. And uh, the engine powers the wool, and then the, it's engine driven. There's, you know, there's no electric bucket trucks out there. And there's auxiliary trucks, and there's a, there's a couple electric ones, but uh, that's just in case of ma major power failure in the engine. Um, then we got hydraulic oil pressure, and that's, you gotta worry about cut oil lines and oil seeping into wounds and stuff like that. And uh, it's dangerous because it's so high pressure, it can lacerate your skin. And the, the electrical wiring in the truck is a, a big hazard as well, so. How a bucket truck works. We got there's lower and upper fiberglass sections of the boom lift, and the insulation is used as an extra safety device to protect the workers from the hazards being put off by the electric lines. And then the bucket liner is a tested piece of the truck as well. It has fiberglass arms, and right here it's all fiberglass up in there. It's uh, not conduct electricity. And uh, the importance of using jacks out here correctly so the tr truck don't tip over and cause damage to equipment or to workers. And then we have a couple standards here. The OSHA 1910.67. It's just uh, aerial devices shall be made road ready by using all the tie downs and security items that allow the units to travel road safely. Then we have 1910.333 and it's uh, Employees work on the grounds to make sure the elevated part of the aerial device has, con has uh, contact the energy wire or energized piece of equipment and it shall be grounded and considered as hot at all times. And then we got 1926.453 and this uh, states that aerial devices shall be inspected and tested daily and operators must be authorized to work the equipment. You shouldn't have the device power unit elevated with power going through it, and it shall be tested to meet ANSI standards. Then we have a couple more here. The 1926.601, they must have just the brakes must be in great shape, and the power unit shall be checked and inspected. And if something's broke, you gotta fix it or get rid of it and get a new one. And then one more or two more, 1926.952, it's the inspections are critical, critical part of the most safety uh, agencies and companies. You gotta expect, inspect at the beginning of each shift or anytime something is altered or changed or something's gone wrong. And then 1926.952, uh, when working around energized parts, it must be granted at all times. You can't pass materials through energized parts and you gotta maintain the correct clearances, which is 10 feet from power lines. And then right here we got safety rules for bucket trucks. Um, you know, you just gotta make sure the manufacturer's operator's manual has been followed. You can't exceed load limits. You gotta have proper warm up. You can't ride in the aerial device while in transport in the bucket. You gotta use brakes, chocks, outriggers, stuff like that. And uh, next we have, why, why do you safety inspect? Our goal is to be safe and not have anyone get hurt on the job site or damage equipment. And then OSHA says we inspect these units on a daily basis. The company who designed the unit recommends daily inspections, and moreover, it's the right thing to do to protect the employees and your company. What to inspect, general condition, just look at anything for obvious defects, fluid leaks, flat tires. Inspection can be done as you walk up and around, and just look at general housekeeping and cleanliness. Then required safety equipment, always have fire extinguishers, first aid kits, Proper PPE, operator's manual, safety manual, stuff like that always has to be on board the bucket truck. And then here's just like an example of an inspection sheet that should be used every single day prior to use. And uh, this just, it relieves liability as well as makes sure everything is up to date and working properly. And then work location, it, it, when working uh, poles, pick the location, they'll be 
best for the company and best for the vehicles to travel. Make sure it's out of the traffic flow and won't bother any vehicles or pedestrians. And the operator needs to be aware of where the workers are on the ground to protect them from falling parts. And once you get put in place, try to make that your main area of work instead of having to move every time. And then operating controls, know how your device operates in your work area. Feather the controls, not the jerk the device. So you want to have a light touch and not uh, just yank the trigger because you guys in the bucket truck can feel all that or in the lift can feel all that. Just uh, watch all directions, use PPE, and maintain proper conductor clearance, which again is 10 feet. And make sure the equipment's grounded so it's not energized. Power panel on clearance. Uh, the lift should never be positioned overhead ha by overhead hazards. It must stay away from power lines by 10 feet or more, preferably more than 10 feet. And leaving the job, when leaving the work area, it's crucial that to know that the work area has changed, equipment and everything has been moved. And while leaving the work area, area be or back out slow, watch out for poles, devices, employees. And when the job is or complete, secure the truck, traveling devices and pick up all around equipment. At the end of the day inspection, we're gonna have a little rundown of that. You make sure you fill out your report, you look for any defects, broken parts, and make sure it's clean and ready to go for the next day inspection and next shift. Here right here, we just have ground, le ground level continuity and uh, make sure it's not Energize it's electric electrocution and ground workers through bucket and arm truck and body make sure there's no other employees Around the bucket truck except the ones permitted to do so And then hazardous running bucket bucket trucks. We got electrical fires oil fed fall danger electrocution toxic fumes and They're very serious hazards And they can be set off and a chain reaction state so one can cause another like if you don't have jack put out right can lead to a tip over, which can lead to the boom failing, and it can just all around chaos. And then, and when in a bucket rescue situation, you make sure that you protect yourself, use PPE, call a dispatcher for help. You lower the unit if possible to remove the victims. Don't make the situation worse. And when there's time, make some notes for a written report of what happened, because that will definitely need to be put in place. And then overall summary, we just make sure you need to learn your equipment, follow rules and policies, operate slowly and cautiously, feather your controls to make sure everybody's safe, watch out for changing conditions because the weather's never going to be the same, road conditions, and always have an emergency plan in mind. And that is my presentation. Thank you for watching.